This is the Cuda boat Huia on her launch day in 1934. And this is Huia the first day I saw her, some 88 years later. Rather neglected than sitting on a mooring without her ballast in Sorrento, Victoria, Australia, this was the vessel I had chosen to sail solo across Bass Strait in. Inspired by the voyage of Captain James Kelly, who sailed an open boat around Tasmania in 1815, I decided to sail Huia, a 26-foot open cooter boat from Melbourne to Hobart, a voyage of some 460 nautical miles. With such an enormous beamy cockpit, I decided the first order of work was to measure up a canvas cover for the cockpit. I took measurements, flew back home to Tasmania, and set about sewing up the cover. A few weeks later, with a sea bag full of gear and a new canvas cover, there was now two months left till my son was due to be born. I thought this was plenty of time. I flew back to Huia and set about preparing her in earnest. Go simple, go now has often been my strategy and this adventure would be no different. We loaded up the ballast, stepped the mast with new rigging, scrubbed the decks, kept an eye on the often terrible Bass Strait weather, added a second battery to power the tiller pilot, put a deep reef in the main, stowed 80 litres of biodiesel, packed food, scrubbed the bottom, and at long last, Huia was starting to look beautiful once again. The weather continued to either blow from the wrong direction or blow too hard from the right direction. It was frustrating, but this is the nature of sailing. The ideal weather window never arrived. So on a moody day I was impatient and decided to sail across the bay to another marina and hope for something better. Our first sail was not amazing. Having never sailed a gaff rigged ship in my life, I had some things tangled up and slightly misrigged. After that debacle, the sky cleared up and I motored the rest of the way with the jib up. At least I could get that working. I kept searching for a weather opportunity with nothing on the horizon. I had no real choice but to go home and wait for a window, a window that never arrived before my son was born and winter descended onto our doorstep. Spring eventually emerged. I returned to Huia on a forecasted double high pressure system causing calms and unseasonably nice weather. The bilge, still full of fuel and now six month old dry food, I bought some bananas and set off. With a stop in Queenscliff where Huia was built all those years ago, we departed out of the cut, a body of water Huia had likely passed over many times before in her 88 years. Finally out through the heads of Port Phillip Bay, we were en route, bound for Tasmania. The forecasted conditions brought glassy seas. I was not unhappy to motor for a while as we waited for the afternoon sea breeze to kick in. We made our way to Wilson's Prom, one of my most favourite places. It was particularly special to arrive by boat, having only ever hiked the region before. The Prom, as it is affectionately known, was also where the very first seed for my desire to sail some 20 years prior was planted.
it's um, pouring rain here in Refuge Cove. I wasn't expecting so much rain, but uh, it is what it is. I think tomorrow clears up, I'm hoping, so I can dry all this stuff out. But um, my voyage so far from um, from Geelong, just outside Melbourne, has been good. And um, I'm looking forward to getting across the strait, really. So I'm hoping that this um, opportunity on Wednesday is good. Um, it's light west southwest and um, increasing quite a bit as the day goes on so I just hope I can get there as quickly as possible before it really kicks up so there's a, uh, a hill here that I can walk to and um, once you get to the top you can get a signal so I've been up there once I'll go up again tomorrow and get a uh, a refresh on the weather. I'm trying to dodge the these leaks. I've got my head under the this sort of deck area here, forward deck area, and then the rest is protected by tarp. But um, yeah, it's it's leaking quite a bit right on my head. Anyway, it's it's not forever. So. We'll see how I go. I spent my days at Refuge Cove waiting for weather to start my Bass Strait crossing, nicely tucked up, without another boat to be seen. The cove was beautiful, heavily protected from the wind and swell in clear water. I read, prepared, walked up the hill to get a phone signal and download weather, and explored the shoreline. It has become customary for visiting vessels to leave a placard, Unfortunately, I didn't have anything suitable to leave, but it was interesting to see some familiar vessels and even whale remnants from days gone by. It was super, super wet last night, um, unexpectedly so, so I'm kind of drying everything out here. And um, grateful there's a bit of sun today um, because if you can't dry things out, it just gets more and more miserable. As the, day, as the days go on, living and sailing a boat like this. So, um, yeah, I spend the day just prepping and um, getting rest and, and leave tomorrow. It's very beautiful sailing with a full moon, especially when you've got to do a little bit of night sailing. Um, so yeah, I can't, can't wait really. I'll try and get as much rest as I can and then, uh, and then wake up and get going. I spent the day prepping the boat and hanked on the foresail and tidied everything up and made everything easily accessible, um, in case, uh, the weather the bad weather comes sooner than expected just to make my life easy and um, yeah it should be a really cracking sail actually so fingers crossed After a very early departure into glassy seas, the wind finally started to arrive.
I'm here in Deal Island, anchored at um, at Winter Cove, and I'm all rugged up with a tarp up in my swag, and um, it's just been one of these oh, crazy days. I woke up naturally at, at 2:30 and thought, oh well. It's a full moon, pretty much, so um, visibility is really good. Um, so I was quite happy about that. I left, it was a very beautiful morning, actually. Full moon, um, a lot of visibility, and um, um, very little wind. Anyway, so sailed into the top of Deal Island, and um, by then it was... It was quite a lot of wind and um, I had one small little reef in the main and still had the number one jib up we were hauling and um, came into the top finally and got a bit of respite in the lee of the island and managed to get the main down quickly because um, I think it's called Murray Passage between the two islands that make up Deal Island it was absolutely howling if I had left that main up we would have been knocked flat, uh, which is not what you want to do in an open boat. So that was a good decision. Um, and then uh, finally made it to Winter Cove, and it's just it was just absolutely howling. Like it was still, it looked like a beautiful anchorage, and then all of a sudden, this bam, like these catabatic type winds out of nowhere. And so I was trying to anchor in this, and I thought oh, I'll get in close to the beach. And I got in a little bit too close, and touched the bottom, uh, which was okay. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I finally got the anchor out, and it just sort of just got a bit hectic. And um, I s sat down for a minute, and it was just howling. And I looked at the tides and realised, oh, this is too shallow. So then I had to go do it all again just wasn't what I was expecting and it was just a, a bit of a lesson really it's always a lesson sailing every time I go sailing there's a lesson it doesn't matter how many miles I sail I learn something and um, anyway I've just reset the anchor again because um, just concerned about swell coming into the anchorage at low tide which is at four in the morning so um, yeah, these catabatic type winds seem to have tapered off a bit. But I don't want to get my hopes up about having a proper sleep. But, um, got a big fortress anchor for a 40 foot boat. And, um, about 12 or 15 meters of chain, new chain. And then I doubled the road up because it was just flexing. The road was flexing. So, um,. Yeah, twin road. Anyway, it's holding. Oh, there's the rain. But um, I'm exhausted. Just I really just hope to do this cross and come into like a really beautiful anchorage and just chill for a couple of days. And then, it, as it turns out, the anchorage is more hectic than the passage. After two days at anchor. Unable to go ashore due to weather, I popped my head up to see this octopus fishing vessel enter the cove. They motored over and asked if I was okay and whether I wanted to go ashore to explore. That afternoon with the captain's nephew, we went ashore in their tender, exploring Deal Island under clear skies, made even better by being invited that evening for a roast dinner, my first proper meal in many days. The weather wasn't ideal, but it was time to refuel and make my way to Flinders Island. After Deal Island, I made my way down the coast of Flinders Island as the sea turned to glass again. 
Motoring to make a coming weather window, the wind finally returned and we were back to plain sailing, almost in sight of mainland Tasmania. From idyllic sailing to extreme low visibility and torrential rain, we made our way down the eastern seaboard of mainland Tasmania. At one point the rain was so heavy, I could no longer read my plotter, resorting to the ship's compass to maintain a steady course. And to make things even more frustrating, my tiller pilot failed, leaving me to hand steer the entire east coast. We eventually reached the respite of Wineglass Bay where I happily ate a can of beef stew after an incredibly long day in the wet and cold. The next day was very similar as I pushed hard to make the final miles home. In truth, I should have stopped somewhere for a few days to wait out the weather, but after 13 days on this voyage, I was well and truly ready to come home. I pushed on as the temperature plummeted, at one point warming my hands on the wet exhaust. After 14 days alone aboard Huia, we were at last home. I warmed my hands by the stove, eagerly awaiting being reunited with my family the next day. As I sat in the dark, I pondered Huia's 88 years at sea. What was a 14-day passage to her? Hardly a thing. I had much to learn.